Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomim, Masechet Pesachim. We are up to Perik Tet, Mishnah Aleph. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Leiru Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Torah states in Sefer Bamidbar, Chapter 9, Pasuk 10 and 11, Any man who will be Tamed to a human corpse or on a distant road throughout your generations, shall make a Pesach offering for Hashem in the second month, on the 14th of the month, in the afternoon, he shall make it with matzot and bitter herbs, he shall eat it. In these verses, the Torah teaches the law of the second Pesach offering that is brought a month after the first, so meaning on the 14th of Yar, by those who did not bring the first Pesach at its proper time on the 14th of Nisan. The following chapter deals with the law of the second Pesach. Now the term second Pesach is used by the Mishnah to refer to the offering made on the 14th of Yar. However, in common usage, it has also come to be the name of the day itself. The first Mishnah teaches who is eligible to bring a second Pesach offering. Mishaya Tameh, one who was Tameh on the, on the afternoon of the 14th of Nisan, and was therefore not eligible to offer his Pesach, or he was on a distant road on the afternoon of the 14th, too far away to reach the temple in time to make his offering, which we will define more precisely in Mishnah 2, and he therefore did not bring the first Pesach offering, should bring the second Pesach offering on the 14th of Iyar, as the verse says. Similarly, Shagag, one who did not bring the first Pesach on the 14th of Nisan because he made a mistake. For example, he did not realize that this was the day for bringing the Pesach offering, or who was prevented from bringing the first Pesach by circumstances beyond his control besides to mind distance. So for example, he was sick in bed, and he therefore did not bring the first Pesach offering, he should bring the second Pesach offering on the 14th of Iyar. The Mishnah asks, Im ken, if so, that anyone who was unable to bring the first Pesach offering brings the second, regardless of the reason, Lama Why does the verse concerning the second Pesach mention specifically a Tameh and one who was on a distant road as those who bring their second Pesach offering? She'elu p'turin me'ikaret. The Mishnah answers, it does so to teach that these, the Tameh and the one on a distant road, are exempt from the punishment of Karet, even if they intentionally do not bring the second Pesach, meaning they were able to bring the second Pesach, but chose not to do so. The Elu, whereas these, those who did not bring the first Pesach, either by mistake or because of circumstances beyond their control, Chayevin bi Karet. They are subject to the punishment of Karet, Chas Shalom, if they intentionally do not bring the second Pesach. And the commentaries explain, as we have learned, the punishment for not bringing a Pesach offering is karet. The Torah writes us in Seva Bamidbar, chapter 9, Pasuk 13. This punishment is given for not bringing the first Pesach, as it says in regard to the first Pesach, but the man who is Tahor, and who was not on the road, and he refrained from making a Pesach offering, that soul shall be cut off from its people. Now this verse also makes it clear that the karet penalty was not set for, for someone who was Tamer or on a distant road. In other words, the Torah exempts these people from karet. Therefore, although the Tameh and the distant traveler are also commanded to bring a second Pesach, they are not subject to karet if they do not, since the verse excludes them from karet. However, those who could not bring the first Pesach for other reasons are not exempted by the Torah from punishment. They merely cannot be punished because they sinned by mistake or to circumstances beyond their control. Since the Torah gave them a chance to make up for their mistake or an ability to act, if they deliberately fail to bring the second Pesach, the suspended punishment of Karet is reinstated. This is how the Rav explains the Mishnah. And that is the end of Mishnah Aleph. Continuing now with Mishnah Bet, the Mishnah now explains, based on what we just taught, that one who was on a distant road and could not bring the first Pesach offering, that he is exempt from Karet, even if he intentionally 
does not bring the second Pesach offering what is considered distant. Mishnah begins, What is considered a distant road? Mina Modi'im Velachutz, anywhere from the town of Modi'im and beyond, away from Yerushalayim. So, in current terms, the art school said it explains in note one, this would range from eight and a half to almost 11 miles, depending on the different opinions regarding the length of a mill. Uchmidata Lekol Ruach, and a similar distance around Yerushalayim in all of the directions, meaning this is a distance of 15 mil in each direction. Divre Ribi Akiva, these are the words of Ribi Akiva. And the Rav explains an average person walking at a normal pace can cover 15 mil in 6 hours. During the month of Nisan, sunrise is a full 6 hours before noon. Therefore, a person with 15 mil of Yerushalayim at sunrise of Erev Pesach within, a person within 15 mil of Yerushalayim at sunrise of Erev Pesach can reach the temple in time for the slaughtering of the Pesach offering which begins from Torah law at noon. Anyone farther away cannot reach there in time and is therefore considered to be on a distant road. Rabbi Akiba now defines distant in ab- he, he defines distant in absolute terms. The Mishnah cites another opinion which defines it in relative terms. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Even from the threshold of the temple courtyard and beyond, is considered a distant road, meaning if he cannot enter the temple courtyard in time, meaning even if one was very close to the temple when the Pesach offerings were being slaughtered, but he could not enter to bring his offering because of circumstances beyond his control, for example, he became too sick to continue, he is still regarded as being on a distant road. And the Rav explained since it was too far away from him, in his regard, that's considered on a distant road. Now, according to Rabbi Akiva, however, such a person is not considered on a distant road, but merely someone who cannot bring his Pesach due to circumstances beyond his control, Anus. Therefore, he is not eligible for the special exemption taught in the previous Mishnah for someone who was on a distant road. Now, Rabbi Yossi brings support from the Psukim for Rabbi Eliezer's view. Amar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi said, Lefikach nakud al hey. Therefore, there is a dot in the Sefer Torah over the letter hey in the word rechoka, distant. Lomar, to say that he is exempt from karet. Not because the road is actually distant, but because it is too distant for him, even from the threshold of the temple courtyard and beyond. And the Rav does tell us, the Halacha follows the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. That is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.